Hey what's up and how's it going? My name is Toby and in today's video I want to show you guys how to speed up your AR development and explore new AR features in a fast and easy way using the Lightship sample package which comes with the free Unity plugin Lightship ARDK. So in this video I want to show you guys how to open up the Lightship sample package, how to find all the pre-made scenes and how to figure out what's going on there. So the Lightship sample package is a collection out of pre-made AR scenes which have all kinds of features such as AR meshing or AR agent navigation, VPS, multiplayer and all of that already created for you guys so you can very easily start your own AR game and just save a lot of time, make it easy for you. And also if you just want to understand how these cool features work that Lightship provides, you can simply go through the project and see how they are implemented by Niantic, by the creators themselves. As always, all the important links are in the video description and all the important annotations are in the comments below. All right, so to get started, we first of all need to download the AIDK samples and you will find a link in the video description. And we can simply go to code and then download as a zip file. All right, so once this has finished, let's go to our downloads. And then let's double click and unzip the AIDK samples main. Maybe you also have to do a right click and uh, click somewhere on unzip depending on your operating system. But here on macOS I can simply do a double click. So this is actually a project file that we can open up. So it's a full Unity project. And for that let's go to our Unity hub and let's click on add. Then go to our downloads and just add the AIDK samples main and let's open. And so it says here that it's not exactly the editor version that I have, but that's not a problem. So I'm using uh, 2022 LTS and this one will work fine with those samples as well. And um, you can also do 2021 LTS, but this is the one that I would recommend. So any kind of 2022 LTS version. So then let's change the editor version and let's simply hit continue. So once this has finished, we can see down here there's this sample package. And here we will find all kinds of samples for each of the features that the Lightship ARDK offers. But first of all, let's go to our settings and let's uh, go to file build settings. And then let's change our platform to either iOS or Android, depending on which platform we want to develop on. So then let's close it and go to edit project settings. And then we can go to the XR plugin management and quickly check that Lightship is selected here as a plugin provider. And so this is the case. And then let's also go to the project validation and simply click um, on edit. So this actually means that our API key is missing, which we will need to retrieve from uh, lightship.dev. So if we click on edit, uh, we'll get sent here to Lightship SDK and we can see that under credentials, there's no API key. So we can click on get API key. And depending on if you are logged into lightship.dev, you will get on this page or you might also get on just the uh, starting page. So for example, if we're going to go to lightship.dev, it might look like this. And so you simply have to sign in, create an account, and then you can simply create a new project. And let's call this ARDK samples like this. And then just copy the key. Then back in Unity, let's uh, paste it here. One more thing we need to do is to go into the playback settings here. So we'll need to set a data path for our playback. Playback is actually something I've been already doing a tutorial on and it's kind of putting like putting a video feed into your editor so you can test your AR scene immediately in Unity. And you can, um, you can click on the link in the video description 
and you will find some pre-made playbacks that I did with the uh, Niantic Wayfarer app. And you can also, if you're interested, take a look in the video description to see how you can do this yourself. But simply you, all you got to do is uh, go to, uh, well, the folder and then I um, chose the desk horizontal playback and then simply click on choose. So it's just a bunch of images and there's like a file somewhere here in the middle, the yeah, adjacent document that will also contain some information about the uh, camera position and um, all of that stuff. So then we can simply get started and it's actually quite easy. So if we go down here in our project in our samples folder, we can start by going to the navigation mesh, for example. So here we have a sample scene of the uh, nav agent system, nav mesh agent, I think, nav mesh manager, nav mesh renderer, and nav mesh agent. That's how they're called. And um, we can simply start and play to see what happens. So nothing much actually. So let's see what happens if we click somewhere. Uh, also really nothing. Ah, but now there's something happening. So there seem to be two, uh, yeah, two kind of squares, but not sure what they do. So then let's actually take a look in the settings. Um, so we can see that this is just the normal setup of the scene. So we have some kind of UI, the event system, light, session origin. This is, should be in every scene, so this is nothing special. But these two things here seem to be about this navigation mesh. So let's simply take a look here and we can see something like tile size. And this seems to be a tile, what we have just seen here. So this bluish square. So let's just reduce the size here to something like 0.1. And um, let's click again and see what happens. Oh yeah, and we can see that actually things have changed and now this looks something like a map, a bit like a chess field. And now let's click and see if something happens. Oh yes, and we can see there's some kind of character. It's pretty big. So let's adjust that. So where could we find that character? Let's go down to the nav mesh sample. Ah, and here we see there's the nav mesh agent. So this might be our character. Let's double click. And uh, yeah, here it is. So let's set the scale of the uh, Yeti here. Um, let's go down and set this one to something like 0.5. The reason why I'm setting this size and not this one is that usually you have something like the movement speed, for example, um, for any kind of navigation. And the movement speed is in many cases um, intertwined with the scale. So if you make the character really small, it looks like uh, it looks like it runs really, really fast. Or if you make it really big, it uh, looks like it runs really slow. And there's also the walking speed actually, as we can see on here and the jump distance, jump penalty. So we are just interested in the walk speed. Let's reduce it a bit and see if it's fine. And yeah, so let's go out of this prefab and in our, back in our scene, let's click play like this. And let's click somewhere else. Uh, and yes, we can see the character is actually moving in a good speed to that position and kind of finding its way. Let's try to click somewhere else, like this. And yes, working too. Perfect. So now we understand actually the navigation mesh scene. And what I would advise is just to go through these uh, special managers that are here in this scene, if you're interested, and just take a look what they do. We can just click on here and we can, um, for example, go to this sample. So this seems to be the setup of the actual um, features of the nav mesh. So if you would want to use the nav mesh manager, you would probably need all, uh, these components. So the script here on the right seems to be in charge, for example, of the nav mesh agent and moving it from position A to position B. And we could potentially open it up, just learn how this works. By the way, I also have a tutorial on that. But we could also just use this as a great starting point for our AR app. Cool. So then what else can we take a look at? Um, let's take a look at semantic segmentation. So I haven't really gotten into that myself. So let's try to take a look what it does. So it's simply save our scene. And um, we can see there's some kind of UI here. So let's, let's click on the canvas and press Shift F. Um, and I think we're here at the wrong side. So like this. 
And um, let's just simply click on play and see what's happening. Uh -huh. And now we can see that somehow our ground here is being uh, overlaid with a red texture. And it seems like, so if we, if we want to know what actually semantic segmentation does, we can also go to the Lightship documentation and let's search for our um, guides here and then features and then there's um, semantics. And we, here we can see that, well, semantics can actually find out different kinds of channels. So sky, ground, natural ground, artificial ground, water, person building, and there's actually a lot more down here. And so we can see all these channels here. So let's find out how we can actually change these channels. And for that, let's go back to our Unity editor and let's see where the semantics manager is actually being controlled and how this whole thing works. So I would guess it would be somewhere at the semantics image. And yes, we can see that there seems to be some kind of semantic segmentation manager involved. So if we click on here, we can see on the main camera, there is some kind of semantic segmentation manager. Okay. And the camera manager, uh, and there's some kind of image that seems to be overlaid with the whole scene, which actually then shows, well, with the red color, the channel that's being selected and some kind of shader material that will probably then um, show the red color. But we also seem to have a drop down, and this seemed to be somewhere in the UI here. So let's try if through the drop down, we can change actually the channel. So let's click on play. And if we click on this settings icon here, we can indeed change the segmentation channel. So let's scroll down a bit and let's choose something else like TV. And yeah, we can see now it's showing the computer screen, although it's technically not a TV, it's still working. Perfect, so now we understand how the uh, semantic samples work and we can go into the script and even understand it a bit more. But that's how we could build our own app based on semantic segmentation. Okay, so finally let's take a look at the meshing scene here. So let's double click on, let's say the textured mesh. And again, just to get started, let's just click on the play button and see what this scene actually does. And as we can see, it's doing uh, 3D meshing, AR meshing, and applying a texture. And it seemed to be based on whether, well, the mesh is on a flat surface or if it's on a wall. So this looks pretty cool and would also be just a great starting point to build some kind of augmented reality uh, app. So if you're more interested in meshing, I actually also done an extensive tutorial on that. But that looks quite cool. Do we have some kind of options here? Ah, oh, we can even change the mesh block size, the calling distance, and some settings here. So this would be also some kind of great way to test out how um, well the feature is actually working. And if we just pause this for a second, we can see that, well, if we click on the XR origin and then open this one up, there should be somewhere, oh yeah, there's meshing here. We can already see that meshing seems to, well, need the AR mesh manager and the Lightship meshing extension. And we have uh, seemingly have the same settings uh, here in the Lightship meshing extension that we could manipulate here live in our settings. So this seems to be the way that you set up meshing. Okay, so now we actually got a great overview on how to uh, import the samples and how to open up scenes, how to figure out what's going on. And so another great way to actually test out these samples is on device so that we can immediately see how it would look like on uh, our phones. In editor, testing is of course always more comfortable, but every once in a while you need to test things on device. And so for that, there's actually a home scene here inside the samples that will just uh, allow you to switch in between different uh, scenes. So if we click play here, then we can see if we scroll, we have all these different scenes that we could test out. So if we go ahead and click on file build settings, we have all these scenes here with the home scene being the first one. 
So if we wanted to test a special feature, we could just deselect all of them and select, for example, the recording or the shared AR. But if we want to test all of them, we can simply take this scene, click build and then load it to our phone and then test out all the features and figure out which one of those features might be suitable for our AR uh, application. All right, but that's it for this video. So if you have any kind of questions or cool ideas how to use the Lightship samples in your own AR games and applications, please write a comment below. And thanks a lot for watching and see you next time.